Hey guys, welcome back to the Pulling Curls podcast. Today on episode 80, we're talking about the husband stitch. That's right. We're talking about my favorite labor and delivery miss, pregnancy miss. You are not going to want to miss this one. Let's untangle it. Welcome to the Pulling Curls Podcast. I'm Hillary, your curly-headed host on the podcast where we untangle everything from pregnancy, parenting, and home routines. I want you to know that there are no right answers for every family, and I find that simplifying my priorities is almost always the answer. It's tangled, just like my hair. And now, a word from our lawyer. Hillary is a nurse, but she is not your nurse. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Please take the advice of your provider who understands your needs and circumstances. Thank you. Okay, guys, before we get started, can I beg you to leave us a review? We have so many listeners and not so many reviews because this is a podcast for busy moms. I know you're busy, but no other busy moms are ever going to find this podcast if you don't leave me a review. Thanks. Okay, guys, super excited for today's guest. I worked with her at my last hospital. She has been a nurse for 10 years. She's been in OB for five years. She just switched to labor and delivery. Just adore the heck out of her. I want to introduce my friend, Chantel. Do you feel prepared for your delivery? In just three short hours, you can be prepared for the confident, collaborative delivery you want. You'll know what to expect and how to talk with your healthcare team. And there are no boring lessons in this class. I'll use humor, stories from my 20 years in the delivery room to engage both of you. I love how Alyssa told me that she found herself laughing at things that used to sound scary. Most of all, you guys are going to be on the same page from bump to bassinet. Join the online prenatal class for couples today. You can save 15% with coupon code UNTANGLED. You can and find the link in the show notes. Hey, Chantel, welcome to the Pulling Curls podcast. Hi, I'm excited to be here. I know, Chantel and I were talking. I'm so excited that she's here. And it was we were like, it's just like going to be old time sitting at the nurse's station being like, oh my gosh, do you know what I just heard? <laughs> right? <laughs> so many things to hear at the nurse's station. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're just going to go back and forth sharing our favorite myths. But let's start with the big one, the husband stitch. I see this one a lot on TikTok. Have you ever seen a husband stitch? Apparently not, because when you told me, I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> So just for you guys listening, the husband stitch is if uh, when they ask the doctor to put in an extra stitch. So if you tear when you have a baby, the doctor is going to stitch you up and they could put in an extra stitch, although really wouldn't make sense. And I'm not sure how it would heal, but I have seen it done. <laughs> um, not at the hospital that we worked at together. But when I worked in California, uh, we did have a few uh, doctors of a particular nationality, which I won't name, who would do it. And you could see the dads like look at them and then the doctor would nod and the dad would nod. And I was always like, this is some really weird. But the nurses pulled, were like, oh, that's the husband stitch. <laughs> so it, I mean, this was a long time ago. This was the first hospital I worked at. So early 2000s. I bet they don't do it anymore because I just wonder how it heals because if it's just skin that you're putting together with a stitch, I don't, it's not going to like do anything. Yeah. yeah. Definitely not going to return you to your pre baby glory. <laughs> Right? Dang it. No, it's, I don't see how that would heal at all. Yeah. It's so like it would hurt. Yeah. I, and then, you know, of course, there was lots of talk in the nurse's station about, like, I guess he felt like he needed it. <laughs> Whatever. I'll just leave that there. I'm going to leave that there because it's a G-rated podcast. Okay, Chantel, what's your favorite myth? Um, mine probably is the one that says you shouldn't rub your belly too much because your baby will be spoiled when it comes out. Have you oh. ever heard that one? <laughs> no. That one always makes me laugh, but I'm like, how does rubbing your stomach equate to <laughs> being a spoiled baby? <laughs> I guess it's like holding the baby, right? Where you're like patting their back. But I'm pretty sure that over the layers of fluff that were over my baby, it probably didn't notice much when I was patting my belly. Uh, no, I don't know. That, that one always made me laugh. Yeah, I think I more scratched my belly <laughs> than rubbed it, I have to say. All those stretch marks. Yeah. Pretty itchy. It felt good. <laughs> Okay. Uh, another one that I got when I worked in California with lots of different cultures is that you are not supposed to get out of bed or shower for six weeks after you have the baby. So in a lot of cultures, you have your baby at the home, your mom comes over, your aunties come over, and they help take care of the baby and you and you're supposed to stay in bed for six weeks. Not a good idea. Side note. Oh, and you're definitely not supposed to have a shower. 
Like that's a big one in their culture. And so women would get up and shower and they were like, they would have to hurry and do it while their mom was gone (laughs) because (laughs) they knew that their mom would be upset that they had showered because they said that it would ball up your uterus and it would never return to your pre-pregnancy shape. And I was like, it will never return to your pre-pregnancy shape anyway. So take a shower. It's going to feel so good. That first shower feels so good. Yeah, it makes you feel human again. (laughs) I would take the shower. Definitely. But I will say that there, I, a lot of people overdo it, especially on subsequent babies. So there is definitely something we should take from this myth in that you should rest more. And I have so many people email me or text me friends who say, I've started bleeding more. It's like baby number three. And I'm like, well, what did you do today? And they're like, well, I just did a Costco run. And I'm like, no, mm-mm, that's too much. Lifting, not good. So things that were okay before aren't going to be okay in those first six weeks. So be nice to yourself. Yeah, definitely. You have to be nice. <laughs> oh. But also take a shower. I would take a shower. I want to smell good after I have a baby. <laughs> or just not be as sticky in my downtown. <laughs> yes, that yeah, that totally is a good reason to take a shower. Yeah. Okay. What's your next myth? My next myth would be that have you this was someone I used to work with. She would say that she couldn't step over ropes because it would tie her cord in a knot or cause a nuchal. Oh, wow. Or the cord wraps around the baby neck. And she said she was from her ancestry is from China. And she said that that was big there, that they wouldn't step over ropes or strings or anything because they didn't want to cause that. Oh, you know that there was somebody in their village or their culture that had that happen. And then there was a knot and they referenced back to when they stepped over a string. That's such a sad myth. That is a very sad myth that I was like, yeah, Ugh. it caused her a lot of stress. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure that myth is. Was she a nurse? She was. Yeah. You're stepping over lines all the time. Right. That's what I said. So I stressed her out. I'm like, are you sure this is not a myth? And she, you know, I think she calmed down towards the end. The more we kept telling her, this is not true. But yeah. Stepped over curious. plenty of IV lines in my time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, that's yeah. sad. When when myths add extra stress to you, that's not a good thing, people. Mm, no, not at all. So it's good to do the research on some of these myths. Yes. Okay. My next myth is the walking epidural because I get asked that a lot online. I've actually only ever been asked it in a room like maybe once or twice. Mm-hmm. But there is the myth that your anesthesia can give you an epidural that you can still walk with. And I've asked a ton of anesthesiologists. I think that there is, but at the same point, it's also not giving you very good pain relief. And also, I have heard that even if they give this so-called walking epidural, you can't get up and walk. Like You might be able to take two steps to a commode, so you might not have to have a catheter. But yeah. Have you had patients ask you about the walking epidural? No, I haven't. Yeah. Usually they just want the epidural and they want it to work. (laughs) Yeah. And they want it good. Because you got to think if the epidural is only working so that you can't, you can still walk because you'd have the sensation in those, in those appendages, then, you know, it's probably not going to take away the contraction pain or the baby coming out pain, which is what I'm paying for. So yeah. Yeah. I'd be very sad to pay that bill and not have had any relief. Yeah. I have had anesthesiologists put in the epidural like with twins or like V-backs and they'll put it in early and then you can still walk with that. They just haven't dosed it. So they just have it sitting there waiting for its special time to work. So that is possible, but also kind of rare. I haven't seen that much. I've never seen that. So (laughs) yeah, I think I've seen it twice. Nice. Okay, what's your next one, Chantel? Uh, My next one would be the you shouldn't exercise while you're pregnant. And that one always makes me laugh because labor is pretty intense. You might want to do a little bit of exercising to be able to handle labor. Yeah. And it's nine months. It's not like it's a... Mm -hmm. (laughs) You shouldn't be working out six weeks after, but those nine months leading up to it. Yeah. One of the people I follow actually says if you work out at a similar level, because you probably shouldn't like now, now's my marathon time right? (laughs) Correct. Yeah. You shouldn't start doing a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But if you work out at a similar level, you'll actually end pregnancy in better shape than you were to start with because you have all that extra blood volume that you're still working out at the same level. Although I would say most people hit month nine and are not working out at the same level, but they're doing things that are, you know, help their body move. And I think that's super important. I think it really helps the aches and pains of pregnancy, actually. I think it does. I think I was best with my third kid at still exercising. And I did feel the best with that one. So what did you do? What did you do to exercise? Um, A lot of walking. Um, I didn't ride a bike at 
eight to nine months, but I rode my bike a lot before that, before I hit eight months. And then I would just go to the gym and do the treadmill and lift some light weights, little, little squats. You know, I wasn't squatting past 90 degrees, but just little squats and, um, lunges and a lot of arm exercising. Yeah. All that's so helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to say that I felt like I was doing full lunges and then Drew took a picture of me and I think a kid was next to me doing it with me. I was not (laughs) doing full squats. Maybe was bending my knees. I don't know what was going on. Hey, you were moving. That's great, right? (laughs) Maybe he just took it at the wrong moment. Where (laughs) You were on your way back up. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Okay, my next one is that you have to do what your doctor says. I get this a lot on TikTok. This is what this one's for my TikTokers out there that if your doctor recommends it, like that's just what you have to do. And it's called a recommendation because it's a, it's a recommendation. It's not a you have to. So even if your doctor orders that you can't eat, you can still eat. Even if your doctor says you need a C section, you can say, I don't want one. It's up to you. We, we don't just go with what the doctor says. So you can make your own choices. Just take all the input that you can. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yep. It's your body. You can make decisions and you can decide what's best for you and your baby. Yeah. I always say that I'm here for a collaborative hospital birth. So you're taking your feelings, your partner's feelings, talk with the nurse, see what she's thinking, talk with your physician, and then your mommy gut, see where you're at. Yep. Mm -hmm. I agree. And honestly, if it's an emergency, you'll know because there's going to be 12 nurses in the room. Emergencies don't happen while the nurse is standing there with her arms folded, staring at the doctor, kind of rolling her eyes. Correct. Yes. (laughs) You know those emergencies. Like (laughs) we're all in there. We're all moving really fast. Yes. (laughs) You may not see it on all of our faces, but things are happening really quickly and you pick up on that as a patient. You know. Yeah. Okay. What's your next myth, Chantel? My next myth would be, which I don't know what you think about this one, Hillary, but the full moon. (laughs) They say it can't put you in labor, but I've driven home so many times with the full moon. And I'm like, that's why my shift was so crazy. (laughs) (laughs) What are your thoughts on that one? So I went to an advanced fetal monitoring once with, I think it's Christine Miller, something Miller, who's big on fetal monitoring. And she was like, total myth myth busted. She's like, you just notice that it's a full moon. And then you're like, that's why. But she's like, (laughs) and so now I start to go out on crappy shifts and I'll be like, oh, turns out the moon isn't full. Just a crappy day. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'm going to start paying attention on my drive home then. (laughs) Um, I mean, there is some talk about like barometric pressure and all that kind of stuff. And you'll hear of like tornadoes or hurricanes that a lot of people go into labor maybe before. I don't, not a weatherman here, but I don't know. Some of that sort of makes sense. Mm -hmm. But again, it's just going to bump you into labor. You're not, you know. You were already almost there. Yeah, no, I agree. And I I had read that one too, that it's more about the biometric pressure changes. But uh, I wouldn't want to. Is there a barometric pressure change with a moon? I don't think so. No. So I know it's probably a myth, but in my mind, it's not. (laughs) Yeah. And if you were 40 weeks, it probably wouldn't be either. You'd be like, aiming for the full moon. Let's get this out. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Okay. uh, My last myth, although you saying yours made me think of one more. So stay tuned for my bonus myth at the end. But my last one is that Pitocin is bad. A lot of times I'll see on birth plans, absolutely no Pitocin. And I'll start talking to them about like, why no Pitocin? And they'll be like, well, I heard uh, an induction is bad. And just so you guys know, we use Pitocin after you have your baby too. And they've been doing that for years. Uh, They even do that at home births. Like Pitocin is the thing that helps your uterus cramp back down so you don't bleed because that's one of your highest risks of having a baby is hemorrhaging after the baby comes out. So if you don't want an induction, that's fine. But Pitocin, I've seen it keep lots of people alive. So not a bad drug. No. Not at all. Yeah. When used wrong, it is a bad drug. But when used correctly, it's good. Yes, definitely. It's my favorite when we need it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your last myth, Chantel. My last myth has to do with telling if you're having a boy or a girl. Have you seen it where they, on a string, they hang a ring or I've seen it done with just like a needle and you lay down and someone holds the string over your stomach and then it slowly starts to move. (laughs) If it swings in a circle, you are having a boy. If it swings back and forth, you're having a girl. (laughs) No. I heard it had to be your wedding rings. It had to be your wedding ring. Yeah. That may not work in everyone's case. (laughs) That's true. So uh, I tried those. So we had two boys and then a girl. And all of my unit was obsessed with finding out what gender that last baby was. So we tried all the things. Most of them, like half of them were right. (laughs) 
<laughs> really? Well, it's like my full moon one. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's right, but probably not. Yeah. So, uh, and a lot of people ask, oh, do you think the heart rate means it's a boy or a girl? And I'm like, they sound the same. Yep. Yeah. They do sound the same. But yeah, I've heard no. that one too. Or baby Ask. moves a lot. It's a boy. Mm-hmm. My le- my le- most still kid is a boy. So that was probably mine too. But he was my first. So don't they say the first doesn't move as much either? Well, I just don't think you notice it as much, right? Because you aren't really knowing what to look for. Maybe. Yeah, you think it's gasping. Yeah. Every once in a while now, I'll be like, "Oh, the baby's moving." <laughs> Not pregnant. Uh, we didn't mention the heartburn one though. My that baby broke that heartburn because he had buckets of hair. Zero heartburn. Really? Yeah. And my kids that had no hair, more heartburn. So all of them. Had heartburn with all of them. <laughs> and they all had like just a tiny bit of hair. Yeah. So they say that there's like some progesterone that causes hair growth, yada, yada. They say it's true, but not in my case. Okay. Are you ready for my final myth and favorite? Yeah. So my friend, her husband was Vietnamese. She was white. And her mother in law told her that she couldn't wear black or the baby would be ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And I was like, um, did she wear it with your husband? <laughs> I love him, but he's, yeah. Anyway, I just thought it was funny. I was like, where did we find the correlation for that one? I don't think that's true. I've heard if you look at an ugly animal, your baby would be ugly from the same culture, but not the wearing black. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, yeah. I'm not a huge newborn fan. So most of them come out and I'm like, meh. It'll yeah. perk up about two months. So that baby look a little more normal. So yep. Yeah. Yeah. Between the cone head and yeah, all the fluid in their face. Yeah. Yeah. They're not the cutest they're going to be, but definitely take pictures because they're never going to look like that again. Mm-hmm. You always <laughs> feel like they're the cutest in that moment. Yeah. Thank goodness for hormones. Otherwise you might be like, let's just put that one aside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's sad, but true. Yeah. So if you have a pregnancy myth that you think is true, who, uh, take it to your doctor, you guys. Or, you know, if you've held it in your heart for all of pregnancy, ask your labor nurse. Tell them, hey, I heard this. You think this is true? And just give them a laugh for the day. That's all the nurses really want. We're pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. We definitely want just a smile and a laugh. So yeah, yeah, it'll make our day. Yeah. So thanks for coming on, Chantel. Hey, thanks for having me. Okay, guys, I hope you liked that episode. Hopefully nobody got their feelings hurt about some of the crazy things that we hear in labor and delivery. This isn't to say that if you've heard those things or you believe those things that you're wrong. But like we were talking about at the beginning, if if these types of things are causing you stress, definitely bring it up to your doctor or your provider. Or if you go into the hospital for an NST, just mention it to the nurse. Sometimes people are more willing to bring up stuff like this with nurses because, I don't know, we seem less uh, like authoritative than your doctor. But yeah, bring it up. See if what you're stressing about is really something that you need to be because the less stress during pregnancy, the better, right? Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope we help smooth out a few of the snarls in your life. We drop an episode every Monday and we always appreciate it when you guys share and review. Until next time, we hope you have a tangle-free day. Mm-hmm.